Hey guys, uh, welcome to module three. Um, I just want to do a short recap on what we've been doing in the last couple modules. Uh, because this week, uh, a lot of what we've been learning about with the courts and judges uh, is going to come together in our milestone one assignment. All right. So what we've been learning in module one and module two is we've been learning about federal courts, state courts. Uh, we've been learning about the structure of each, in other words, how they're organized and the roles of each of the tiers within those court structures. Uh, we've learned about judges. Uh, we've learned about federal judges, state judges, um, the qualifications for those positions. Uh, and each state, as we learned this past week in mo module two, is that each state is going to be a little bit different in terms of how judges reach the bench. In other words, are they appointed? Are they elected? Uh, what is the process? And if anything, hopefully you realize that every state is just a little bit different. There's a, uh, some tweaking involved. Uh, some states, for example, you might have to have been a practicing attorney for 10 years. Maybe some it's only five years. So everyone's going to be a little bit different. But nonetheless, we've learned about the differences between federal and state courts and how they are, in fact, different. And so let me just summarize a couple of those because it'll be important as we learn, as we work on our uh, milestone one assignment. All right. So one of the, some of the differences we've learned are, again, selection of judges, how that takes place, uh, the caseload and the types of cases. And those are outlined in chapters two and chapters three. So on its face, you should realize that state courts and local courts have a much heavier caseload than federal courts. Uh, because I'll tell you, most of us will probably never ever be in federal court. But many of us may find ourselves uh, using the services or being brought to court in state and local court. So if you ever get a speeding ticket, you may have to go to traffic court. Uh, if you get divorced or have child custody issues, you may have to go to family law courts or family courts. And often those are trial courts of general jurisdictions. Um, you know, if you have a teenager and they get in trouble with the law, you may have to go to juvenile court. All right. So many of us have some familiarity with state and local courts. Very uh, few of us are ever going to have to go to federal courts unless maybe you've been selected to sit on a grand jury or a, a jury trial. OK, so we've learned about the hierarchical structure. We've looked at some of the differences and you can analyze some of the differences by understanding some of your responses to some of the questions we did in my, uh, module one and module two. All right. Um, and those are all going to come together here this week in our first milestone assignment, because some of the things you're going to have to look at are the hierarchical structures for federal, state, and local courts, um, which we've already studied either in a short paper or in a discussion assignment. Um, we're going to be looking at levels. In other words, why is it important that we have our dual court system here in the United States, federal courts and state courts, all right? And some of the primary differences, all right? The number one primary difference between federal and state courts is going to lie with jurisdiction. In other words, the authority of a court to hear a particular type of case. So that's the key distinction that's going to be with federal and state courts. Um, we're going to talk about subject matter jurisdiction this week. You're going to be learning about that in the sense that we're going to be talking about it in the context of specialized courts. All right. Um, but subject matter jurisdiction is the authority of a court to hear a particular type of case or cases relating to a specific subject matter. OK, so if we take a look at a particular type of case, let's just select an immigration case. Right. Uh, federal courts have subject matter jurisdiction over immigration cases. State courts cannot hear immigration cases. They do not have subject matter jurisdiction. Those are handled by federal courts. All right. So federal immigration courts are going to handle those. When we look at or cases relating to a specific subject matter, um, for example, juvenile courts have the authority to hear juvenile cases. Family law courts have the authority to hear 
family law cases, right? You're not going to find family law matters in federal courts because those tend to be a state function and responsibility, all right? Because um, states uh, record marriages. Uh, you're not married in, in a federal court. You're married in, if you get married by a judge, you're married in state or local uh, judges can marry you in some states. Uh, and they tend to be more of a state function than a federal function, right? And so um, that's a little bit about subject matter jurisdiction. But you can tie in some of the subject matter courts or specialized courts that you can be working on this week as part of that example to illustrate exactly how this all comes together, okay? So there's two, remember, there's two ways in which a case uh, falls under subject matter jurisdiction, and that is to hear cases of particular type or cases relating to a specific subject matter. So both of those are, are, are what you're going to be learning about in your discussion board assignment this week, and they're going to be part of your module. Right? Then we're also going to be ending up in your milestone uh, one assignment talking about jurisdiction and venue. Right, And so as you think about jurisdiction and venue, the jurisdiction for our scenario, as I pointed out previously in our announcements and some uh, other short lectures, is going to be federal because a bank robbery is a federal crime because there is a federal bank robbery statute. Okay, so that's going to be the jurisdiction. All right, so once we establish jurisdiction, then we have to look at the issues associated with venue. Right. Um, one of the things you're going to have to look at is uh, implications of venue, and a good place to start is uh, last week you had to look at um, potential venue implications associated with uh, geography and court structure. Okay, That could be an implication of venue. Later on in the class, we're going to talk about um, change of venue requests, and that would be another implication of venue. In general terms, all right, uh, the assignment uh, the, the specific critical element is asking you to describe implications of venue, and it's basically uh, in general terms. What are some common implications of venue? So again, we talked about uh, state court geography and state court structure. That is an implication of venue, and then you can cite that um, news article I posted for you uh, as a good example. Okay, so again, uh, we're going to be Narrowing our focus more, so a lot of the stuff we learned about federal courts, state courts, their structure, the primary role of each tier. Remember, uh, we talked about uh, federal courts, and we you learned that uh, district courts, uh, their primary role is to serve as the trial courts in the federal court system. Uh, circuit courts of appeals, for example, their primary role is to serve as the intermediate courts, but they also have a review function and a policy making function, right? And so we're going to be looking at state courts as well, understanding the roles of each of those tiers. And um, when you talk about state courts and the tiers, and you're, you're discussing those, uh, remember to use the terminology found in our textbook, and that is trial courts of general jurisdiction and trial courts of limited jurisdiction. So take a look at that chapter on state courts. Uh, and that will tell you what their role and responsibilities are. Why do we have those specific types of courts? And the textbook will outline that for you, okay? Uh, so I think that's it. So again, we're bringing a lot of these things together this week in our Milestone 1 assignment on state courts, uh, federal courts, state judges, federal judges, the idea of jurisdiction and venue. It's all coming together this week, all right? So... Um, think about what your previous assignments were and how you might be able to apply some of that information to your milestone. Uh, and that's what our focus is going to be on this week. Okay. So again, it has to be two to three pages um, and uh, use APA formatting uh, for citing your references and sources. Um, take a look at the short module lecture where I go into more detail on each of the critical elements for this milestone one assignment. Um, and I think that will help you uh, uh, tremendously, okay? Uh, but if you have any questions in the meantime, don't hesitate to reach out to me, Holler. All right, guys, have a great week and uh, a great weekend, hopefully. Um, for those of you in the football, we're doing the playoffs today, Sunday. The, the day I'm taping this is Sunday. So um, see if your team makes it to the next round, okay? Uh, again. Have a great week, everybody, and I do appreciate everyone's hard work. Thanks, guys. Talk to you later. Bye.